My name is Mark. Um, decided that I'd come back to uh, British Columbia because um, I fell in love with it back in 74. Uh, but I've come back to a, a different British Columbia. Um, the British Columbia I used to know, uh, people were very hospitable. People would take you into their home. Uh, they would feed you. Nowadays, um, everybody's locking themselves up. Our fight shouldn't be amongst one another. Our fight should be amongst them, um, people who are trying to keep us where we are. So here's Sean Bonswan, as I like to call him. Bonswan, I believe is his last name, but um, he's our musician, local musician here. He plays bongos every morning. Occasionally he graces us with his guitar and sings lovely songs. This building is mental health supported housing for senior citizens that have been living um, in substandard housing or hospitalized previously and this is sort of a way to keep them living independently in their own homes with lots of support and a, and a community philosophy. In the downtown east side, you're, if you're over 50, you're a senior. You know, we're, we're feeding elderly people and the, um, it's, it's strange, but they, they love liver. They love it. It's like, I make liver, it's like there's a line up for seconds, they want liver, they're just, ah, liver. There was a, a private donation. They um, saw a desperate need to address food security in the SRO population that don't have cooking facilities or the income or some of the life skills to maintain like a basic marginal level of nutrition. And that was a catalyst for um, the, what we call it the lunch peddlers. And it's, uh, our, our program is called the Downtown East Side Central Kitchen. And there's always something going on at Hastings and Jackson's because it's so busy and it's such a diverse population that access the corner here. You've got your high-risk drug users, you've got the occasional survival sex worker, you've got lots of senior citizens, you've got lots of Chinese people who live in the neighborhood, you've got families who live on Jackson. Like, it's a really, really diverse little corner. You know, I think one of my more recent favorite stories was uh, meeting a woman who was a catalyst for the, ki the garden across the street and watching what was like kind of an eyesore of a lot that had been abandoned for years turn into this, it was like I blinked and I looked up one day and there was like a huge thing, I don't know how, what they're growing with over there, but it's, it's like unbelievable and I think that's one of my favorite things about this corner for sure. You know, you can't stop the wave of, of gentrification, but I would love to see this neighborhood remain to be inclusive and um, diverse, like ethnically, economically, um, in every way, like, cause that's really what makes it a great place. So I have a really old Mercedes wagon and I pulled it out into the alley and my muffler fell off. And I was like late to pick up my kids. You know, it was one of those moments and Sure enough, two guys came who were coming down the alley. One of them used to be a mechanic, and they're sort of, you know, looked homeless, possibly homeless. And uh, they immediately got into the car, unhooked the other thing, like took my muffler out, put newspaper in my back, um, in the back of my wagon, put my muffler down, and they were like, "Oh yeah, you know, this is what happened. Well, I can see it's rusted off here." And I thought, you know, this is community. Come on to her feathers on the forest falcon. Bao 
我就睇到我啲細路仔喺呢個區度成長啦，係最開心。